ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to your Jobber Chat podcast. Yeah. Now, I know that you were expecting my Garfield review. That was meant to be today's video. But I completely forgot. Well, actually, it was meant to be last week. Okay, I apologize. It was meant to be out last week. But I had just a busy week last week. And Battleground was on Sunday. So my podcast for Garfield <clears throat> will be out <laughs> Thursday. Yes, it will. It will be out on Thursday, I promise you that. Now, this premium live event, NXT Battleground, took place in Las Vegas. Good old Las Vegas in the UFC Apex Arena. This is the very first time that they've emanated from a UFC arena. And this event started off huge. It started off with a six-woman ladder match to determine the first ever NXT Women's North American Champion. And we had Miss Fallon Henley. We had Kalani Jordan, Sol Ruka, Last Legend, Jada Parker, and Meechin. Now, this match was already star-studded with everyone involved. Anybody, and I mean anybody, could have been a winner in this match. Except one. I'm not exactly a fan of Jada Park. Jada, Jade uh, Parker. Yeah, not, not a fan of her. Lash Legend could have won. Sol Ruka definitely up there. Meechin was my original pick. Fallon would have been nice. But the ultimate winner was Kalani Jordan. Conveniently winning a, uh, the, the t championship in a ladder match the same way that Carmelo Hayes did. Yes, they are dating each other. So, you know, it's... That, that icing on the cake that Kalani Jordan won uh, the NXT Women's North American Championship. All the respect in the world to her. Who will be her first title defense? <clears throat> You've got, you know, Fallon Henley's there. Lash kind of got destroyed. She got destroyed by everybody. They kind of ganged up on her and threw her out. Crashing onto a ladder. So, um, yeah, that uh, that wasn't good. Meechin is currently feuding with Jada, Jada, Jada Parker. Again, you know, whatever. Um, so, I'd be interested to see who will be her first challenger. Then we had the Tag Team Championships. Axiom and Nathan Fraser... Against the Good Brothers. I'm I'm calling them the Good Brothers. They, they keep referring to them as the OC. But Meechin's not really... Doesn't seem like she's associated with the group. And AJ Styles has now officially turned heel. He's facing off against Cody in an I Quit match. At Clash at the Castle this week. So I don't know why they keep referring to them as the OC. It's... To me, it's the Good Brothers. That's that's what they are. And this tag team match, I have to admit, it was it was quite good for for the time that you know these two tag teams were given. And Axiom and Nathan Fraser, hashtag, and still tag team champions. <sighs> now this next match. It had potential. It had potential to be good. But ultimately. 
they messed up somewhere they messed up and the wrong person won no disrespect to Lola Vice but this should have been Shayna Baszler's match. Now we know last year Shayna was responsible for getting Shrek out of WWE. So how can Shayna go from that match at SummerSlam to losing to Lola Vice who just wants to shake her ass? That, that is literally Lola Vice's character. She wins a match. And she shakes her ass. That, that, that is her character. I, I'm not making it up or anything. You know, the, the way that Sh Shayna was fine after this match. I think there was a fluke or something. Something happened that shouldn't have. And it, I think it hurt Shayna's reputation. Like, Lola didn't need this win. Personally, I don't think she did. She didn't need this win. It was an NXT underground match. So, you know, it's, it's two MMA fighters. But at the same time, it just didn't, didn't need to end the way it did. Lola didn't need the win. Yes, she got the win a couple of weeks ago against Natalia, you know, who's not an MMA, an, an MMA fighter. But Shayna? Yeah, no, Shayna should have won. For the obvious reasons. And then we had match of the night. Match of the bloody night. Okay? This, this was match of the night. Oba Femi, Wesley, and Joe Coffey, even though, realistically... Joe Coffey didn't need to be in this match. I, I was watching this live with Creeps. And we both kind of said to each other, well, we know who's taking the pin, right? Yeah, it was Joe Coffey. As good as this match was, um, Obafemi threw Wesley at least 10 feet in the air for it to hit a crossbody on the Coffey. And, you know, the, the other members of Gallus got involved, Mark and Wolfgang. But Obafemi just took them out with ease. And apparently this is going to lead to a TNA crossover or something. That Nash Carter and some other guy who used to team with Wesley Creeps was telling me about this. They're called the Rascals or something. It's going to set up a six-man tag. Possibly. I, I don't know much about the Rascals. I only knew MSK when they were in WWE. That was Nash Carter and Wesley. But the ending of this match, um, Wesley was caught in a powerbomb position. Hit the powerbomb. Femi hit the powerbomb and then he hit a pop-up powerbomb on Joe Coffey who... Yep, he took... Uh, the pinfall, because of course he did. Of course he did. Yep. We all kind of knew that was going to happen. And then the co-main event, although personally, I'll get to it in a second, this match should have main evented. Roxanne Perez versus the TNA's knockout world champion, Jordan Grace. Right off the bat, this is awesome chance. TNA chance. These two put on a clinic. Probably one of Roxanne's best matches to date. Next to her winning the NXT Championship from Lyra Valkyria and making her tap. Oh, I'll never forget that. But, yeah, no, Roxanne really held her own against Grace. And the counters from each of them, countering each other's finishers... Jordan Grace hitting a spine buster. All the different moves that were hit. But then the bizarre, really bizarre, uh, Tatum Paxley showed up. And we thought that she was going to try and take 
Roxanne's championship, but she ended up making making a getaway with the Knockouts Championship. And who should make an appearance? The person you would least expect would make an appearance to save the championship. None other than Dana Brooke. Now, of course, she's in TNA, and she's called Ash by Elegance or some rubbish. But when she showed up, both me and Creeps went, Dana Brooke? What just happened? What just happened here? Apparently, G Grace is hosting like an open challenge this week on TNA. And people are saying, oh, it's going to be opened by Tatum Paxley. And I can see that. But Dana Brooke... I, I refuse to call her Ash by elegance. That's just rubbish. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. <laughs> but Roxanne was able to counter as she attempted the Juggernaut Driver, which again is a horrible finisher move. Why do so many people have bad finishers? The Women's Tag Team Champions have a crap 2K finish, and Jordan Grace is just the same Juggernaut Driver. What? What is that name? But Rock, thankfully Roxanne was able to counter into the Pop Rocks and was able to retain her championship. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from Trick Williams and Ethan Page. I'm not going to take anything away from them. But... They shouldn't have been the main event. The main event should have went to Roxanne and Jordan. For the obvious reasons. This match, I don't believe it had much going into it. But it ended really quickly. All it took was one trick shot. And that was it. Paige got into a, an argument with the ref. And then he turned around, bam, there's your knee, and that's it. That, that was the match. It didn't feel good. And I, I even looked away for like five minutes whenever we were watching this. And when I looked back... It was over, and I was like, huh? What What just happened? Did that Did that really just happen? I, I asked Creeps, I was like, did that just happen? He's like, yeah. Yeah, that happened. I was like, no. No. Why did that happen? What just happened? And I was literally left speechless about the whole thing. I couldn't believe what I had witnessed. And again, it's it's all it's I don't believe it's worth mentioning. But that sexy red character was there and she kind of ruined the show. I mean a lot of people don't like her and you know obvious reasons why they don't like her. I mean I don't like her. I I, I don't I don't if if someone does like her you have a weird fetish. Like I mean she basically ruined the show, in in my uh, personal opinion. But yeah, no, you you can't can he please everybody? You know, it's it's that thing. You, you can't can't please everybody. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, um, the next NXT show that is happening is NXT Heat Wave. NXT Heat Wave is coming on July 7th. So it's actually happening over Money in the Bank. Weekend, Money in the Bank is July 6th. And then Heat Wave is July 7th. So I think this is one of the rare cases when NXT is happening 
after a pay-per-view. Because, you know, Money in the Bank on Saturday, live from Toronto. And then Heat Wave right after. It's, it's another premium live event. So it's going to be an interesting one, that. Um, as far as, you know, videos <laughs> on this channel go, we obviously have Garfield coming up on Thursday. Uh, what week are we in currently? I'm away from the 14th to the 16th. I'm away with a wee weekend on the church. Uh, so nothing... Are, are we missing Money in the... Or not Money in the Bank, sorry. Clash at the Castle on Saturday. Because I'm staying overnight somewhere. So I'll be catching up with that on Sunday, probably. Um, I've got Paul Smith on the 21st. That's coming. Yes, it is. Um, so... I believe on the 18th, so next next Tuesday, will be my Clash at the Castle uh, podcast. Nothing on Thursday, I don't think. And then Friday, the 21st, is Paul Smith. Nothing on the 22nd. My Paul Smith video won't be out until the 25th of June. And then, uh, movie-wise... What have we got movie-wise? We've got Inside Out 2. That's next... That's next Tuesday, actually. Yes. That's the 18th next week. Uh, so my podcast will probably be out the 27th for Inside Out 2. But ladies and gentlemen, this was my podcast for NXT Battleground. I'm sorry that... I had to change my schedule ever so slightly, but, you know, these, these things happen, you know, when wrestling events pop up and old Ryan Job 62 forgets about them, you know, it's, it's normal for me to forget about something. Wouldn't be the first time, and it certainly won't be the last. So, I will see you... On, uh, I will see you on Thursday for my Garfield review. Yes, I'm going to be talking about that. And I just apolo I apologize in advance for what's about to come your way. Thank you for listening, guys. And I will see you in person on the 25th. But you you'll hear from me in podcast form. Trust me, it's real fun. <laughs>